So we're going to talk about triangular and symmetric matrices today. We're going to start off with the diagonal matrix. So pretty much, so pretty much the diagonal matrix only has entries in the diagonal. Yeah, you can check this by multiplying this. This times this will get me one in the middle. This times this will get me the one here. And the first one, of course, I, this times this. And it works both ways. So different example. If this is our A and one of our diagonals is zero, and we take we flip that around, take the inverse of it, it'll be 1 over 0, which means that that A inverse does not exist. So we can see 1, 4, 2, 1, 4, 2, 4, 9, 3, 4, 9, 3, 2, 3, pi, 2, 3, pi. So we take the transpose and we get the same back. But I also highlighted here what it, symmetric means. It's symmetric across the diagonal. So we can see they're each negative across the diagonal. So what we have here, we started off with AB to the power of T, quantity. We work it backwards, and this is symmetric, so it's B. This is symmetric, so it's A. But we know BA doesn't equal to AB. So when you're looking at these, AB to the power of T, it doesn't necessarily equal to AB. We don't know. So the product of the symmetric matrices are not necessarily symmetric. So our first one, if A is symmetric and invertible, then A inverse is symmetric. So we need to prove, we want to prove A inverse is symmetric. If it's symmetric, then the transpose is equal to the matrix. So we're going to start with the left-hand side. And if you remember, we proved last week that these can be swapped. And we do know A is symmetric. We haven't used that. If A is symmetric, that AT turns to A, but that minus 1 is still there, and that, we don't need the parentheses there, and that is my right-hand side. I'm only going to prove this one. It's very similar going this way. You can practice it at home. So there's two things we need to prove. Let's work on the first one. They're square and they're symmetric. That's given. So transpose means that it swaps, and these are the same, and it's the same, so we get n by m. So that's a square matrix. Okay, so the next one's symmetric. So to prove symmetric, we want to prove, so again, we're using this one. A, A, T is equal to, it's symmetric, the whole thing's symmetric if it's equal to the transpose. So notice this is inside what it means to be symmetric by the definition. So I'm going to actually start with the right-hand side, and we're going to transform it to the left-hand side. Just looks like there's more stuff to do. So to take the transpose, it's the second one, transpose. First one, transpose. Well, if you take a matrix and you transpose it, and then transpose it again, you're just putting it back. Looks like we have it. Proved it.
You guys remember what singular means? The way I remember it, there's singular versus non-singular. Again, my little mnemonic device here. Non-zero versus zero, meaning a row of zeros. Singular has a row of zeros. Non-singular is one solution. This is many solutions. Infinite. Well, in order to have infinite solutions, you have to have a row of zeros in a three by three. So let's look at our first one. What can X be to get a row of zeros there? Plug in X equals a half, you get a zero there. But we're not done. Now it looks like an equation that you might wanna solve or set up an equation, but let's just row reduce, okay? So let's follow the algorithm. We want a one here, and then we can zero those out. How do I get a one here? Well, whatever's there, if it's a five, you divide by five. Or if it's x minus a half, you divide by x minus half. Everything else you copy. So now that we have a one there, these are both easily zeroed out. So let's do it. Minus x plus x will give me zero there. Minus x squared plus x squared will give me zero there. That does it. It's just our algorithm. You guys do the rest. It doesn't change it. It's not going to change it. Well, here's another opportunity for a row of zeros. So we'll write that as number two. We looked at our question. It's finding all values of x. So there's more than one. That was our hint. Okay, so now that we have that, our next algorithm is we want one here, and then we can zero that out. So we do the same thing. Divide by that. That's the only thing to change for now. Now we can zero this out pretty simply. That's why we did it. And that doesn't change it actually, because of a zero there. So our last one, and that's it. Okay, one last problem. It's a little bit of a puzzle problem, I think. We're given a to the third. It's not a diagonal matrix. I mean, you can look at it and maybe even guess, but I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna let A, the only thing that you can assume is because of that zero and the way you multiply will be zero there, which helps. So if that's true, we have A to the third. So we wanna multiply these three matrices. So two at a time, let's see first. And I saved the hardest for last. First row times the second column will get us there. First row, second column. So look at the wrong one. So it's A, B plus B, C. So let's go ahead and multiply. It's just a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 2. That one's the easy part. Now the hard part is last. It's this times that. So A squared B, C times kind of a mouthful. So we're actually done. Just got to figure out what it is. Term by term, this has to equal to this. C to the third's there, and then this mass is this. So write the easy ones first. So now that we have A and C, we can plug in A and C here, and then we'll be able to solve for the third variable. Yep, so B is 10. So therefore, Number A, and let's check. Let's multiply the first two. 10 minus 20. 10 plus 20. That's what we were given. Okay, that's it for today. Have a good day.